understanding waveforms in the last video we learned what waves are and how they transmit through a medium like air how the sound travels from the sound source to our ears in this video we'll try to understand how the sound is represented as a waveform on a paper or on computer screen now this is important because when you are producing audio digitally or on the computer you when you're recording and editing the sound uh, you obviously cannot see the sound on the computer screen what you can see is the waveform of the sound so have a look what you see in front of you is a very simple waveform it's called sine wave and in this video we'll try to understand how we interpret that and how a sound vibration translates into a waveform like this for that let's for a minute go back to our definition of sound that we saw in our last video now here it says a wave is a disturbance or oscillation okay a disturbance because uh, a disturbance caused by vibration so as you can see a disturbance or oscillation okay these are the key points here that we need to understand now let me go back to our uh, same old video that uh, the, uh, the illustration that we saw in the last video here the sound is produced when you pluck the string and the string starts vibrating right we understood that already if the string is at rest and you don't pluck it what happens nothing happens actually it does not vibrate okay now this state of any vibrating body which is stationary which is not vibrating this state is called equilibrium okay because the string is at equilibrium there is no force on either side of the string but when a force is applied then the equilibrium is disturbed and the string starts vibrating and producing the sound so we already know that when the string vibrates one way and the other it creates a wave okay and what we are going to do is plot this vibration on a piece of paper how do we plot a wave on a paper or on a computer screen uh, on the x-axis we say it's time because wave is a vibration in time okay so the wave just not just stand there in in one instance of time it's a, it's an ongoing thing so we have to have some representation of time so on the x axis we have a time and on the y axis we have what we call amplitude or the displacement okay displacement is the distance from the equilibrium to the to either side of the equilibrium that is displacement meaning how much the wave is going farther from the equilibrium so if we are plotting it in time then we know that as the time goes by it displaces more and more and more till it reaches the extreme and then the other way around it displaces less and less and less till it reaches the equilibrium and then it moves in the opposite direction the displacement becomes more and more and more in the opposite direction till it reaches its extreme and back so in real time as you can see in this in this uh, small animation uh, what uh, is shown is that the wave is waveform is plotted in real time as the string is vibrating now you can see that as the string is vibrating in one end it is plotting the waveform it is moving up and when it is vibrating on the opposite end the waveform is moving down and what we have have done we have effectively created a waveform representation we have drawn the waveform on the paper so as you can see it has got these different parts and we're gonna look at the different parts of the waveform very soon but that's how the waveform is represented on a paper or on the computer screen how do we interpret this line as you can see this line is the equilibrium line which means that it represents nothingness neither the peak nor the trough or or neither of the extremes so when the you know, there is no vibration there is no energy okay so this line this curvy line represents the energy that how much energy is applied on either force okay and 
as you can see it is going up and then it's going down and it's going up it's going down so one side let's say top represents one extreme and the other side represents the other side of the vibration so one side of the vibration other side of the vibration one side of the vibration other side and so on and it goes on and on and on till the sound is produced so this line the center line is called the equilibrium let's write it down e -qui -li -brium. Equilibrium is this line which means that the vibrations are going around this line and then as you know that it's uh, Two extremes one end or the other so one end is plotted is represented by this side and the other end is represented by the lower side so the top part if you take the highest point on any wave this point this is called a peak P E A K this is called a peak okay and uh, this lower part the lowest point on a waveform is called a trough T R O U G H okay it's called a trough okay and we measure the waves along these two axes Okay, the x-axis and the y-axis these are the two axes along which we make our interpretations of the wave and we measure the wave and in the next video I'm going to show you uh, the two most important properties the, the properties of sound wave which are most important to us that is amplitude and frequency and what they mean and how we represent these two properties on a waveform